I'm sweating like Peter Clement in an off license here. Okay, we're working on it. What, you've got someone to hose down the sun, have you? Yes, they've just strapped on their wax wings. Classical illusions are no substitute for air conditioning. You know, I genuinely thought you'd be in a better mood today. She's not even here. Yes, but he is. Our gun-toting handler. Who, Andy? I don't know what the fuck his name is, do I? He's here to keep us safe from people like disrupt. More like keepers in line. I hate guns. Give me the willies. Ten seconds, everybody. So, we've got any actual real news tonight? Well, the world's on fire. <laughs> that good enough for you? Going in five, four, three. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Siege mentality. The World Council today established a military blockade to enforce the unjust and punitive sanctions now entering their 10th week. In a statement from team headquarters a short time ago, Prime Minister Julia Salisbury issued a commanding response to this unprovoked escalation. The regrettable decision taken by the World Council this morning have left the citizens of this country isolated and fearful but advance have prepared for this day. Our stockpiles are large, our wealth is unfathomable, and we will defend our citizens with every last breath from this latest brutal and calculated act of war. We are with you, one team, indivisible and strong. Thank you. New Leaf, former footballer Johnny Hansleaves has made a surprising revelation about what he plans to do now he's leaving rehab. Having successfully finished his treatment but facing public indifference, the sporting hero has decided to step away from public life and dedicate his time to the betterment of others. His decision to abandon professional sports for a life of science has shocked even those closest to him. His former coach, Jimmy Tracksuit, said it's such a shame to see someone so good at kicking a ball Give all up to advance the frontiers of human medical knowledge. In it to win it, exciting news from Advance today with the announcement of a new monthly prize draw for all team membership card holders. Every month, lucky winners from across the country will be picked at random to receive what Team HQ are describing as unique prizes worth more than money used to be. Take up on the scheme has been much higher than expected, and if this lucky winner's delighted face is anything to go by, it looks like pretty soon everyone's going to have to have one. Flood hearted, a shocking inspection of Remington Smith's new flood factory has revealed health concerns that could leave the groundbreaking facility's future in doubt. After the public's lukewarm response to the industrial plant, the troubling report that found a possible long term risk to shop floor workers could be the final nail in the coffin. CEO Sophia Remington, however, was optimistic that her employees would remain loyal. But perhaps she spoke too soon. As these photos clearly show, workers are taking the warnings very seriously, and some have even abandoned their posts to seek medical advice. It seems like my mother was wrong. A Florida day won't keep the doctor away. Locked up tight, with relations between doctors Wall and Svorsborg and Horgensford deteriorating at an ever-increasing pace, the plans for their high-tech war were revealed today. The bitter rivalry between the two intellectuals have become an impassioned race to determine whose design will proceed to construction. The public's positive reaction to their plan has meant no expense will be spared in building the gratuitous barricade. Dr. David Wong has always had a tendency to over-engineer his ideas, and it seems this new design will continue the trend. With over 4,000 moving parts and consuming as much power as 14 petting zoos, his static separation device promises a high-tech and over-convoluted way to keep the groups apart. Road to nowhere? A large turnout was reported last night for an illegal and unsanctioned demonstration by radical pressure group Disrupt. Although overzealous policing by some community cohesion officers led to isolated scuffles after the event, the activists managed to make an impressive visual display in the heart of Parliament Park. As well as burning itself into the minds of all those who see the image, the disrupt symbol is also scorched into the turf and what can only be described as an impressive exercise in branding. All this, and I'll be talking to some people with fascinating medical conditions, as well as one of the contenders in this year's Feline Football Championship and her proud owner. That's all up on tonight's National Nightly News.
correspondence has been dispatched to every court. Well, unprecedented hot weather. First, let's go to Megan Wolf in Shining on Sea to see what the scientific community has to say. Megan, how's the weather there? It's absolutely glorious, Jeremy. Thank you for asking. I'm here with Dr. Anna Burns at the University of Princeton. Are you enjoying the weather as much as I am? Oh, yes, it's wonderful, isn't it? My eyelids are sweating. And you're part of a team carrying out a study into just what's causing this unbelievable heat, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Yes, we want to be able to reassure the public once and for all that there's absolutely nothing to worry about and that they can enjoy their sunstroke and fossil fuels in peace. You sound very confident about that. Oh, very much so. I can say without any hesitation, there's really no cause for any concern here. I I've actually left my car running. <laughs> So tell us about this experiment. Ah, well, we take data from weather stations from all over the world, along with atmospheric samples, and we take all that and we feed it into this state-of-the-art computer, and very soon we'll be getting a high-tech readout of the results. Hi, me, that sounds very fancy. Ah, I should just say, um, uh, none of this would be possible without the generous support of Rivington's Fist. This is all thanks to their unrivaled investment in our future, and may I just say, complimentary personal anecdote. Oh, here we go. And, ha, as expected, everything is absolutely fucked. Hang on. This... This can't be right. Uh, right, but uh, obviously you said a second ago that everything is absolutely fine, so... Well, actually, under concern level, it just says, Why, God, why? We should be celebrating these wonderful results, I think. <laughs> yeah? We need to evolve gills within 40 years. You look thirsty. Here it just says, Shit, shit, shit. Look at you. This is meant to be a celebration. Can't go around looking like that. Shit, 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 There you shit, go, shit, much shit. better. Can I just say thank you again to Sophia Remington for <laughs> providing all of this. Everyone, we don't have long. Time is running out. running out. out. Absolutely out. right. That is all we have time Abandon for. Abandon hope and return to the forest. Abandon hope and return to the forest. Uh, enjoy that. <laughs> I'd like to thank Dr. Burns for just one opinion on the climate. The sea will reclaim us all. There you have it, Jeremy. <laughs> proof, if proof be need be that everything is just fine. I'm Megan Wolf, here with science. Back to you. Megan Wolf there, attempting to do some actual news. Next, let's over to Robin Short, who's in Scritchford with some of the winners of this week's team membership lottery. Robin? Thanks, Jeremy. I'm here in Scritchford with Gary Failsafe, a janitor at the local school, and Amelia Jackhammer, an aspiring poet. Both of you were drawn at random from those who hold team membership cards to receive this week's amazing prize. How do you feel? Filled with fervent euphoria. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. And all that we had to do was fill in a quick form or two. Wow, that sounds so convenient. But we're all dying to know. What have you won? That's right, Robin. I've won dinner with Julius Salisbury at one of the capital's top restaurant. Ooh, swanky. And I've been invited to Peter Clement's house to help him dredge the gutter in. That's absolutely terrific. You must both be over the moon. I've written a poem about it. So, can you tell me about the moment when you first heard the news? Well, I was battling against a particularly difficult floater, probably one of the sixth formers, when the headmaster came and found oh, me. I was involved in a similarly brutal conflict with a particularly arduous stanza. So you were both polishing turds? No, oh, I don't like to polish them. I like to keep them intact for my collection. Oh! How unexpected. <laughs> I don't polish turds. I write poetry. Potato, potato. So, Gary... Do you think... Peter Clement's going to let me keep the contents of his downpipe. There's no harm in asking, I suppose. Well, would you like to hear one? No, thank you. Gary, when you signed up for team membership, was it in hopes of winning the lottery, or were there other reasons? I like a flutter, of course, but no. The boss said I had to sign up to keep coming into school. Very sensible. It's important to know who we're trusting around our children. Oh. I have an unpublished book of sonnets about children. Perhaps you'd like to hear one. <laughs> no! Or an anthology of haikus on the death of innocence. I'd rather hear about Gary's turd collection. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought you might say that. Oh. Oh. Are you all right? Yes. It's coming.
coming. It's inspiration and it's delicious. Mm. Right you are. Mm. Today on the show, there's no news. Just a man who keeps multiple poos. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Biggins, my favourite. See how it's fibrous, mm. really lovely texture. <laughs> Would you encourage other people to enter for their chance to win? Uh, if it's colour you're looking for, take a gander at all blue eyes here. The national news lost its way when it covered some crap on a tray. Some of these are quite rare. Maybe that was unfair. And that's all we have time for today. <laughs> Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Robin. What a lucky pair they are. And finally in this segment, it's over to Patrick Bannon, who's gone to the smelliest town in the country to see how the unprecedented weather is affecting the locals. Patrick? Hello there, Jeremy. Hello, yes. I'm here live in Grizzleford, which has recently voted the smelliest town in the country. And I have to say that, you know, in this heat, the smell really is. I mean, it's, 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 it's something else. Barry Lardons, mate. You've lived here your whole life. How'd you put up with the stink? Well, we're just all very proud of our achievement, to be honest with you. So tell that look at him. Proud as punch. Do you know what it's like, son? Being the second smelliest town. No, I don't. Living in the shadow of Arsminster. Oh, smug fucks. But who's laughing now, eh? Hey, what? Not me, that's for sure. So what happened, mate? Uh, right, the good people from Rillington Fist came in and saved the day with their factory. You're talking, of course, about the newly built flower factory. <laughs> yeah, they gave us this big presentation on jobs and growth. But as soon as we heard about the stench, we paid them whatever they wanted to put it here. Stink not affect your It's strong at first, but you get used to it after several weeks of your first bout of sickness. The judges were very impressed. So, oh, what what is the sickness? Uh, oh, that's nothing to worry about. It takes a few minutes before you develop any symptoms. <laughs> Now, folk are saying something about the production line and how they dump carcasses directly into the water main, but I think it's probably a few valves on the high street. On the high street? Uh, should I see a doctor? What, what are the symptoms? Well, the first one is asking stupid questions. <laughs> then folk experience a lot of inhibition. <laughs> Cops, do they? When was the last time you brushed your teeth, this stinking old tramp? <laughs> oh, next according is a period of randomly bursting into song followed immediately by delusions of grandeur. Oh, that's a weird problem, I've never sung in my life. Hello, it's sexy Patrick Bannon and he's wearing sexy shorts now. Oh my God, look at me. I'm like a stallion. I'm gorgeous, why didn't you tell me? I should take my shirt off. You know what? I'll even let you touch me if you want. Uh, oh, that, that'll be the bout of undeserved self-confidence. <laughs> Love the Bannon, feel the Bannon. <laughs> oh my, what's the and the ennui. <laughs> now, all that's left now are the hallucinations and unconsciousness. Nano Dotty? Is that you? Why are you made out of elbows? You know I don't eat opinions. Ah, ah. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, folks. Uh, once he wakes up, he'll be just fine. We'll just find a place to stick him where it won't matter how many times he evacuates his bowels. Right, that's all here from Grizzleford, a town that's really making a stink. Oh. Uh, you need to s stand back. Back. <laughs> who appear to be here purely for medical reasons. Don't go away. Unless, of course, you've got something better to do. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back. One minute back. Well, that was stupid, even for you. The next guest has some unsuitable opinions for the evening news. Keep your eyes and ears and heels for subversive talk. It would be nice if you could try not to undermine the station tonight. People are starting to notice you now. What do you mean? Jeremy? My mic is still. I know the prices are mental. If you're boiling hot and you're thinking, I need to get cool, I need to get down to meals because we've got the air cut out. We're serving up ice creams to all the customers, but our prices are dropping faster than a kid with a cold. It's on the floor. Yes, they're dropping every day. We've got crazy artificial paddling holes, ornamental paddling holes, big poles, little poles. 
That's what I'm talking about? Cat football? We should be doing an interview with the war minister, or a report from Grantham Downs. Even the weather would be more fucking relevant than this. Jeremy, please, just breathe. It's just something like to keep people's minds off things. Exactly, which is wrong. People's minds should be very much on things. Christ, it's so fucking hot. Please take your seats as quickly as you can. I can't do this anymore, Jane. I've had enough. That's it. This is just ten seconds. Get over yourself, Jeremy. Why don't you stop feeling sorry for yourself for five? Five, four, three. Welcome back to to the National Nightly News with me, your host, Jeremy Donaldson. Later, we'll be talking to the captain of the territory's first cat football team, Professor Pumpkin. But first, I'm joined by three guests with some balmy bodily behaviours. Joining me is a woman who's been hiccuping for over nine months. Isn't that right, Miss Piercy? Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, tell us, what brought all this on? Well, it's all a bit of a blur, Jeremy, to be totally frank with you. So I was watching your show and I remember seeing the news about the election and it, it, it hasn't stopped since. Fascinating stuff. Also here is Frankie Steampipe. Um, perhaps you could explain to us exactly what your physiological foreboil is. I'm here to say it's high time people like me were respected. We're constantly overlooked in the workplace, we're whispered about on buses, and we're asked politely to leave children's birthday parties. And it's disgusting. I, uh... I'm sorry, my bowels have comic timing. And finally, I'm joined by a man who answers every question honestly, even when it isn't aimed at him. How do you cope with that, Mr. Truman? With a combination of booze, self-hatred, and hardcore pornography. Is that right? Not according to my therapist. <laughs> well, in that case, then let's speak to Rose. Tell me, how does the hiccuping impact you? I get shushed a lot, which is hard. <laughs> hard. At work, they've asked me to, uh, to stop answering the phones. It's really affected my confidence. Well, I find it really fucking irritating. People tend to believe your story? Fuck no. Actually, I've been surprised at how much support I've received. <laughs> <laughs> and Frankie, um, why have you come here today? Because my wife left me and I was hoping that the fame would win her back. We've started a group for people with ailments deemed broadly comical by society. It's called Take Us Seriously. That's right. And we, we bloody well mean it. <laughs> and who's joined so far? A bunch of fucking losers. It's just us so far. <laughs> and how much success have you had? Well, we've seen some real positive changes. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's been a runaway success. Shit all. Not a single person come to our fun run, and all of our leaflets fell in the canal. <laughs> well, Miss Piercy, um, some people are saying your condition was actually caused by the shocking events of that night. What do you think? Come down, Mr. Donaldson. That's absolute rubbish. <laughs> what it would be like to have a pair of tits? <laughs> Could you? Um, um, I'm sorry. It's very hot. What was I thinking? That you're a team fuck puppet? No. Or a sellout cunt? <laughs> Apologies. Just reminded that he can help it. And hey, if this isn't live television, then what is it? A fuck fest of propaganda masquerading as journalism. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Frankie, Rose, tell us, how can the viewers get involved with your cause? Yes, we're holding a, a sponsored run in um, Capital <laughs> the Park uh, next weekend. It's called the No Smiles 13 Miles. No, it's called the No Laugh no. Half. What did I say before the show? That it was the team pulling Jeremy Donaldson's strings. No! I, I didn't say, <laughs> well, I didn't say we that. may have to end that there, unfortunately. What a harmless bit of fun. <laughs> Steady on! <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about. We demand respect! <laughs> ah, yes, well, later, I'll be talking to <laughs> Professor Pumpkin. A ginger tabby with a well-class pair of penalty paws. Is that really necessary? No, it isn't. Let go! <laughs> Not you! Unhand him at once! This is oh, enough! That's enough! <laughs> enough! Oh, what are you doing? I'm trying not to piss myself. Alex, cut the Don't you dare! Don't you fucking dare cut to the ads before I tell you to. Now, you in the broadcast centre, Bozeman's and Oscape Home, you listen to me. You cut to the ads before I tell you to, and I will kill every single person in this studio. I am thinking about what I'm doing. I've been thinking about it for a long time. We all should be. 
Christ, it's so fucking hot in here. Do you remember when we used to do the real news before it was all lottery winners and bloody cat football? We are on the brink of a siege, the likes of which the world hasn't seen in hundreds of years. The enemy is at the gates, and I'm stuck here talking to these three fucking idiots. I think my hiccups have stopped. You three, get the fuck out of my studio. Go on, now, go, before I change my mind. Jenny, lock the doors. Jenny, lock the doors. Yes, Jeremy. Now, good. Yes. Now, good. Right. Yes. You in the broadcast centre. You in the broadcast. Alex, you listen to me. You pay attention. Now, I'm sure you've already loaded up exactly what you're going to play in the commercial, but today is going to be a little bit different. Look to your right. Yes, really. Look to your right. There is a VHS tape, and I want you to load it into one of the machines. And when I say so, and not before, you play it. You've got about 15 seconds, so I wouldn't waste any time. Now, all cameras. Alex, I know I've doubted your competence, but surely even you know better than to play that tape. We don't take orders from armed lunatics. Play a normal advert, or there will be consequences. All but now, we're going to show the other side for you. For a bit of fucking balance. I like the days. Alex, play the fucking tape. No, I don't want to hurt any of you. If I see anything I don't like, I will not hesitate to start by killing this man. Now, well done, Alex. The from the station's the perspective, you made the right oh, call. I imagine the ratings are going to be through the roof. your name? Andy. Of course it fucking is. Jeremy, put the gun down, please. How long? We're going live now. Welcome back to what's left of the National Nightly Welcome News. Our main story tonight, there is a fucking massive military blockade being set up around this country. We are surrounded and outgunned. As incidentally, am I. Now I have asked for all the security doors to be locked, the studio doors to be locked, but security is on its way. So, I doubt we'll have much time. But while there is, let's try and do the fucking news. Let's try and do the news. Our first guest tonight is Jenny. She works here in production. And earlier today, she told me she put forward several news stories. Older viewers will remember those. But they've all been rejected. So tell us, Jenny, what's somehow less important than Barnum and Bailey's amazing shit circus and Commander Pumpernut's the fucking cat footballer? Professor Pumpkin. Really, Jenny? There isn't much time. There isn't much time. Come on, just one real news story. I don't know. I can't think. I'm trying. Christ! You haven't even taken into public ownership yet. And we might as well be wrong from Julia fucking Salisbury's no doubt immaculate kill room. And this gallant knight in slightly shattered armour is Andy. He's a CCO. What's that stand for, Andy? Community Cohesion Officer. And what does that mean, Andy? Well, we aim to strive. No, you utter prick. I mean, what does that mean? What is a CCO? What are you? What is a CCO? Policeman! You're a policeman, a fucking policeman. Yeah, that's what we used to be called. Used to be? It was less than two months ago. What the hell is wrong with you all? Jenny, any recollections yet? Nothing's springing to mind. All right, then. Looks like you're in the hot seat, Andy. Exciting, eh? I mean, that's what you joined up for, wasn't it? Excitement? It's your first hostage situation. 
Yeah. Yes. Pretty shitty you end up being the hostage, eh? Never mind. How many people have you arrested for not caring or having their ID cards? <laughs> Well, firstly, we don't arrest anymore. We invite for consultation. And they're not ID cards. They're... Don't be a bell end all your life, Andy. You know what I mean. Answer the question. Well, it shouldn't have to be a big deal to prove who you are. Only the guilty have something to fear. Well, yes, actually. How desperately naive. Look, I'm just a police officer. Look, I'm just a police officer. CCO. Just following orders. Oh, come on, mate. That's not fair. It was rhetorical. Jenny, ready to spill the beans yet? Jeremy, please stop. I'm scared. I'm Alex scared. didn't even play your tape. This is pointless. It's over, Jeremy. It's over, Jeremy. I was going to quit tonight. I had notes. See? I had notes. See? There's a recording. A VHS tape. A message from Disrupt. I haven't heard it, but I know what it's trying to say, and I wanted you at home to hear it. So listen to the other side and make up your own minds. So listen to the other side and make up your but own minds. But Alex Winston, who works in production, decided it was not for your eyes and ears. It was not for broadcast. Maybe Alex will play it after the next break. Doesn't matter. Tomorrow morning will arrive in every major news broadcaster worldwide. But I wanted you to hear it first. To listen to what Disrupt had to say about this unreported country. Because... Disrupt deny. Well, we swapped places while I wasn't looking. They're now the ones investigating, looking for evidence, trying to make the world a better place. For me, I'm in this newsroom interviewing Jeff fucking Algebra. What Disrupt have to say is important. You might not agree with all of it, but you should still hear it and make up your own mind. Are you serious? Disrupt. A credible source. Get more objectivity out of Alan fucking James. Oh my god, are you being deliberately obtuse? Why can't any of you understand? There's no such thing as a credible news source anymore! Aaron, shit! Aaron! Oh shit, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to. He's bleeding. It's in his shoulder. First aid! Whoa, we need first aid! He doesn't need first aid, he needs a fucking ambulance! Paramedics, there'll, there'll be paramedics for the security. Unlock those doors. No! Don't do that! Jeremy, he's bleeding. He Don't could die. Jeremy, yes, but if you, if you open the door, that's a How kiss. did you think this was going to end? Why are you even here today? Why are you even here today? It's supposed to be your day off! It's supposed to be your day off! My date cancelled. I thought it'd be more fun to be here than moping around at home. Truth be told, I wanted to see you. Being annoyed with you is it's like wearing a comfy jumper. Yeah, that's the nicest thing you've said to me. Let's not make it the last. Let's not make it the last. Right. All remaining cameras on me. All remaining cameras on me. In a minute, I'm going to ask Jenny to unlock the doors. Jenny. No. Oh, me, Aaron, our cameraman can get the medical attention he needs. I should imagine I'll get arrested for this. I wasn't the graceful. I had a speech. I had a speech. I was meant to be residing with a flourish of honour. A last hurrah. I was going to wish you all one last peaceful night. I was going to wish you all. I'll say that happening now. Still, I want to have one last stab at the news before I go. You see, there's so much more we're not telling you. There's so much more. There's large groups of scientists, and they're making, they're testing something, something loud and sort of. What was that? I didn't see it over the Why do you leave me? Miss Pierce, stay back, please. Mr. Donaldson, you have Jenny. ten seconds to lower your weapon. If you do not comply, we will open fire. God, ten. To the ads. Nine. Alex, cut to the ads. Alex, think of the consequences. Tired of dull and lifeless hair? Fed up?